Good afternoon everyone, it's Rachel here and I am going to be doing my video today and I really don't know what I want to do. Well, I kind of know what I want to do, but I'm not really organised, so I may flap about a little bit. Um, but I want to do some more document style journals and I thought, I, I have all these lovely um, file folders that were gifted to me. Um, I don't think I... Did I buy any? I've got... Oh, I've got some bodgy Italian ones. They're thinner. Um, and so I thought I might do something with them for the for the cover of the document style journal. I do have old ones that I've used before, but I thought this is accessible to everybody. They're not expensive. A lot of you um, lucky people in the States and possibly in Australia and the UK, you have access to vintage ones um, that are like these, this sort of shape. I'm just eyeballing it. That's the center there. So what is that? Four and a half inches I folded it. Oh, that's good. I, that's a clever chook thing to do. I could then eyeball it here. And, oh, is that gonna be, it's gonna be a bit bigger. Oh, this one's a different, okay. I probably should have done that first, but anyway, it might not work. I may have to trim this one down. So that will go like that. Oh, that, I think that's quite interesting, though, if the back's like that and the front's a bit smaller. So we'll do that. And that's the same with this one, too. So these are going to be my covers. Um, and I don't know how um, what I'm going to put in them. So just excuse me while I um, go down here to my papers and see... What do I want to put on the cover? I definitely will put some fabric. I'm just going to... Now, these are all sort of more backgrounds, but I know I've got lots of papers um, in my other... in my box, in my working box, I call it, I think. All my little flappy bits have fallen off those. So... I got I got things piled up everywhere, and I'm going to move the box, and things are going to flop. There we go. So, just remove. Oh gosh, I got all of these things to work on. These are all things to work with. These are in my box. Well, these are a what's in my box. I could work on those tomorrow. I also just wanted to follow on. Hi, Lulu. Hi, Molly. Would you like a piece of apple? No, thank you. Thank okay. you for asking. Um, I followed on from Friday that afternoon and just all of those scraps, well, not all of them, but nearly got were collaged onto pages and I made heaps. So really great to have those because you can do more of those tags that we did on Friday. Um, or these could be the backs or the fronts. If you wanted something more simple, maybe stamp on them. Do all kinds of things with these. Oh, that's an, one I had already done. And then... Um, that one I had already done as well. Good thing to do when you start to build up a lot of scraps. Rightio. So in this box, I have a whole lot of stuff. Just rather than having it all put away in all those little um, folders, you know, those plastic ones that I have, I do put some things in here because I keep pulling them out. So I might as well just have a box of them. Um, I have done one that with that on the cover, haven't I? Oh, that's going to be perfect. Um... Uh, no, I didn't. I did the blue one. So we've got our new kit. Steffi's just finishing off. Um, he's very clever. He's done the. He's done a wonderful job on them, and he's just finishing them up. There's a couple of things still to finish, and then maybe by the end of the week we'll have. Well, I hope earlier we'll have a new kit with all the paraphernalia ready, um, ready to go. I'm just going to grab some more pages out here from my other document style kit that I absolutely love and I've only done one journal with it so I'm really excited actually to do this um, so I thought today maybe we'll work on covers which is kind of like it's one of those things that's very nice to do when it's sort of quiet and not talking and and oh gosh I got these two let's have a look at these these might be nice on the cover and they wouldn't have any risk of fading or anything like that because I did print with an inkjet ink jet printer. You could spray um, your. Uh, that's I was wondering what that paper was. I keep getting I keep distracting myself. Um, you could spray your inkjet paper with a fixative 
with a spray fixative, acrylic fixative that artists use for their, sometimes some artists, not all, use for their um, artworks. So um, you could do that and then it would protect it a little bit more. I don't know about the longevity of it all. These are more sort of, oh, God, don't you love that? I love those. Oh my goodness, I love that. That map, it's a map. I might rip that and glue that on there. Might I? Or might I not? I don't know. Let's just see what the options are. I think I liked those. One day I'm going to have a play with those. I was, you know, that these may be the ones that when I was sending out kits, I sent out the ones that were what I consider were more beautiful to you guys. And, um, and then I just kept a few, you know, these ones that were sort of more black and white, but I still feel like you can play with them. So I'm wondering whether I want to use maybe one of these. I don't know. It's just going to be like an evolving idea. And, or maybe I want to use, not that, pulled that out by mistake. Let me just tap you because I've been flinging things around and you might go out of focus. Um, I could use something like this, but I've done that one, haven't I? Been there, done that. You might say been there. Oh, that's, that's a double-sided. So that was something I was playing with, folding it over. I've got to glue it down. And I might um, include that as a page or could fold that and put that in a pocket, that one. And let me see here. Just double check they're not double side. Oh, that's Christmas. We don't want Christmas. That's just there by mistake. I'll tap you again. Um, I do love the... Oh, I love that. I would love that on the front. Okay. Let's see. Isn't it fun when you love your things? I love my things. Um, the, oh, look at that. Did we do that? I can't remember what I did on the last one. What did I do on the last one? It was such a while ago. Oh, it was while I actually I did it before I went to Australia and then I pre-prepared the videos. I don't know. So, or do I want to use like an actual book thing? And I don't know. Just a minute. I told you it was going to be like that. You were warned. <laughs> Please don't be annoyed. But you were warned it was going to be a fly by the seat. I've got more. There's more. There's more where that came from. I've got all kinds of things here. And I have sent these things out to you guys. So it is nice to just maybe pull them out and see if I've got something here that is appropriate. Sometimes I usually keep the worst ones for myself. Yes, I don't like any of those. I did keep those for me these my book I don't I'm not I'm not so mad about those so I kept those I didn't send those out um in my life when whatever kit they went into some of these oh see I love all I love all the artwork I love all the paint the miniature and oh I just love oh Pietro Lorenzetti oh they're wonderful they're from Siena I just love them I love oh that look at that I don't know because they are going to be botanical. They're botanical. The um, They will be botanical, of course. The uh, kits. Oh, I love that. Duccio di Buoninsegna. He was... Um, what's his name? Oh, dearie me. Um, Giotto's maestro. Master. Teacher. Teacher of all things. Oh, aren't these beautiful? I have to find a place for them. So these were leftovers from the kit. So, I mean, some of them may go into another kit again. No, okay, I don't think I want to use. I would like to use something, I don't know, if it was like a bit more mappy, I think I would prefer that than these particular ones. I don't like, I don't know, they're not quite the right size. I think that's what's getting me. Just let me see what else there is. You just have to be patient while I, you know, Audition all the things, because that's what happens. Oh, don't you love them? Look at that. Look at that script there. I love, love, love artworks. I just love them. They bring me joy. Um, and I'll tell you in a minute, when I get concentrating, what I did on the weekend and why you didn't hear from me. Just a sec. Tapping you again. I've got more. There is more. Um, there were... No, I don't have anything there, I don't think. Oh, I do have two of those, a few of those that I sent out in another kit. Oh, 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 nearly dropped it all. 
I've got these are beautiful too. These are beautiful, you know, illuminated manuscripts. I could use a piece of that. That was really beautiful, that book. I did keep two, one. Oh, I only kept one for me, aren't I? All for two myself. Ah. You can't say I don't share. Oh, I've got two. I've got three. I tell a lie, I've got three. But you see, I don't want to cut that. Oh, I might have to put that in as a page. Oh, it's so beautiful. Look at the animal. And I have to keep those. I can't. I've got to keep something. That was a really beautiful book. If I were to find something, that book again, I would buy it. Um, it was all broken. So I have no shame. No shame in pulling it apart because it was broken. Okay, I think I'm going to put the map and then embellish. I'm going to rip it. Yes, I am. Oh, am I going to do a very crooked rip? Um, um, I think I might like that part of the map on the front. It looks like it's got claws. Does that look, not, not look like claws to you guys? It's a bit wide. Just going to take a bit off. I think I'm going to put that on the front. I don't know. It's, a, it's a, an evolving idea, isn't it? And I could have that on the back. Oh, I could have had the wider piece on the back. But anyway, I can put that there because I'm actually going to have some fabric as well. Which I didn't bring in here at all, but anyway. So when the kits... So I won't work on this again. I, I'm sorry. Give everybody, or any, not everybody, anyone who wants to participate time to have a think about it. But I, um, I would tear that. Could I combine it? I could, then I would, yes, I'm going to combine it. So let's rip this in. It's a bit shiny. It doesn't matter. I can, you could go over it with um, clear gesso too if you didn't want to take, if you wanted to take a bit of the shine off. I think I'm going to put that there. That one's going to go there. That's perfect. And then this will go on the back of this one. And then I'm going to grab some, I think I'm going to grab some ledger paper. I'm thinking on the exterior of these, I want to put not digital. Um, just... Just in case, just in case, I'm sorry if there's a glare there, just in case, um, oh, oh, I haven't shared these yet. Do you want to see? Mm. These are ones I scanned, actually. These are ones I scanned, so I haven't, I haven't put these in a kit yet, but I have, oh, I have these. Oh. I prefer this on one. Rip it in half. And the, now these books were totally, totally, they had no, devoid of cover, um, highly damaged. Um, highly damaged they were and no cover. And so they're going to get a new life. They're going to get a new life in some kits, but I don't. I haven't decided what type of kit I'm going to do yet, but they will be going in a kit. I'm actually going to switch it around. So that's going to go on the back because we're going to have the little monogram. Although, oh dear, I, I have to make sure I don't cover it with the fabric. Oops, taking that off. I might keep that. We can put that somewhere. I'm going to glue that on there right to the edge. I don't mind actually seeing a bit of the file folder, which is why I'm using the file folder. Um, and then that will go... Actually, do you know what? Let's have a piece. Aha! Got it. We'll have a piece of the map on the back. That's it. And this will go on the front here. Oh my god, I love it. And that will go on the back. See, it eventually gets, it comes to me, gets to me. Oh! And look what happens when I turn it around. Oh, that, that's going to be covered. Oh, well, it is what it is. Okay, so let's glue those on and lock it in so we don't have to flap about any further making decisions. And I did have a big, nice piece of paper that I could glue on here. A nice big piece I need. So I am going to glue. Isn't that beautiful? It's just hard to choose which side. I've got new glue. I ran out of glues. Okay, 
and I might put wet glue around the edge just to make sure I put enough glue on it and it's not going to go anywhere because I am not going to do machine sewing. I haven't pulled out my sheen for probably, I don't know how long, a long time. I have not pulled it out for a long time. Um, I decided I didn't like the sewing around the edge of, I like the look of it. I didn't like the feel of it around the edge of journal cards and things. I found it, or pockets, especially pockets, I found them hard to glue um, with the lumpy stitching, you know, the zigzag stitching. So it's just a personal choice. I just, after years of thinking, again, one of those things, I guess, you know, when you first start, you um, learn from other YouTubers like I did, and you follow um, along thinking, this is what I need to do. But actually, it's just a personal personal choice, and it's really just a look. Uh, so just make sure you glue enough, is what I say. And if you don't want to stitch around the edge, don't. Okay. I do. I do have a lot of fun. I hope you have fun too. Um, when when these things are just evolving things, and I don't really know what's going to happen, I find those the most fun. I really do. I may not even get these covers finished because uh, I really don't know what direction I'm headed in. So I just need to go with the flow a little bit and see what happens. So also, you guys, if you don't have, obviously, not everybody has that. Look at the font on these. So as I said, these are scanned ones. So yes, I am going to use these in making journals. Um, and then I will eventually, but I don't know when, um, be making some sort of journal kit I don't know I have to decide and I will put some of these pages in because they are really super special and there are lots of them that have the initials and things like that on them so yep unreal banana peel is what I say so yesterday um, our friends had invited us uh, so one of Lulu's best friends her mum is from here and her dad is from the province of Arezzo so he's from actually he's actually from where Michelangelo came from Caprese di Michelangelo um, and it's near this wonderful town called Anghiari which is where there was a very famous uh, I can't remember who painted it was it Michelangelo or Leonardo da Vinci or someone someone painted the Battle of Anghiari um, it's a very famous painting I just I'm having a blank as to who who painted it and what it actually looks like but anyway um, it's quite a famous town. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful old town. If anyone ever has the opportunity of going there, um, it's actually off the beaten track. Like it's not on on maybe the, let's say the Anglo-Western world, possibly um, radar. In the sense, we, you know, when you, when you live in Australia or, or the UK or the US or other places, we even maybe France and, and other European countries you, or wherever, you just sort of think, excuse me for not mentioning all countries, um, you sort of think, when I go to Italy, I'm going to go to Florence, I'm going to go to Rome, I'm going to go to Siena, I might visit Monte Regioni, um, Modena, even some people visit, not everyone, um, it's lovely, um, Milan, or, you know, Venice, I mean, there's so many places to visit in Italy, it's overwhelming, Padova, um, so Anghiari, I, I had never heard of it until one day we were driving from here to Arezzo and the way we go, we go past this town and I said to Steffi, what is that town? I, and then I read the name of the town. I'm like, oh, I studied a painting about that town. I can't remember who did it, as I said, but anyway, um, it's gorgeous. And apparently they have an artisan festival going on starting up soon that um, our friend said is very good. I don't know what type of things that you see there, but I have to ask him. Anyway, they invited us. to. They said, why don't we go to Arezzo um, for the day? It's a two-hour drive for us because we have to go over the Apennines or sort of between the Apennines, around them around them, and between them. It's not direct. It's actually not that far kilometre-wise, but we have to go. We've got the Apennines there, the mini mountains. So um, we did that was the most fun we had so much fun um we went to his sister lives there in in Arezzo so we we met his, up with his parents and they just had the best day I think they really enjoyed it and they're so cute and um and his nephew and his sister and her um companion because she's about my age so 
anyway so um and the antique market was on well i was telling mum because i've taken mum to that antique market before and i used to think it was the bee's knees because it's a big market but they've reduced it it used to, because arezzo is quite a big town center i don't know if anyone's been to that antique market you might be disappointed if you go back because they've reduced the size of it. It's not all the way up to the top in the park up the top where they ha you have the panorama sort of views. Um, they've reduced it down into a few, into the big main square. And then it's, um, it's also in some streets. Um, and there was a lot of like areas, courtyards and things that were sort of like vintage clothing, which the girls enjoyed, the young girls, Lulu and her friend. Um... But as far as, you know, for what we're interested in, you, you can get books there. Um, probably a little bit more pricey. I mean, I looked at a book. It was beautiful, 1500 It was small. It was a little book like this, 1500 450 euro. Um, but the gentleman who's selling it is really lovely and <laughs> explained everything about it, which I loved. He's very kind. He knows you're not going to buy it at €450, euro, but um, he was very kind and lovely. Um yeah, I just found that, you know, that, I mean, I guess if you've never been to a, an antique market here, then that one would be exciting. Or oh, we could put this in inside. Because I could do them botanical Italian, couldn't I? Well, they are going to be Italian because they're going to have the documents in them. Yeah, so that's what we did yesterday. We went to the antique market in Arezzo, um, but it was really, I mean, I wasn't really looking too much. I bought a few little things, but not too much. Um, I was really just going there for the day with my friends and we had a lovely time. So, um, yeah, so that I didn't, we got home at 9 p.m. So I didn't do a video yesterday, unfortunately. And I wanted to get one done, um, you know, pre-recorded, but I didn't. It didn't happen, so it is what it is. Now here, I'm just sort of thinking, sitting here thinking, what am I gonna do on this cover? I mean, it is so beautiful. We're gonna put um, antique documents, actual ones, and, um, and then the new kits will go in there as pages, so I won't do that yet. And I'll probably have put some laces. And I was gonna say, anyone who doesn't ha have original lovely rag papery sort of book pages to put on the cover a printable will suffice like literally you can just use your tear ruler hand tear it make it messy and it will be equally as lovely i can guarantee you and give it a spray with a spray acrylic spray fixative and make sure you buy a matte one um and that way uh, you'll be set, is what I'm trying to say. So I'm just having a look around here. I'm just, because as I said, I'm not quite sure in what direction it's going to head, this cover, but I'm going to grab a few things here. I don't know. I don't know whether I want to just see what ripped things. I think I've used a lot of them. Or maybe I don't know. I love this. Maybe I don't know until. So I do love that one on there. I might put that there. The other one, I'm not going to do them both exactly the same, of course. Oh, I might put that there. I think I like that. And then I'm going to pull out some fabrics. And let's just have a quick little play with some fabrics, just for the spine. I just want to get a feel for it. That's why I want to do that. So I do have a scrap box over here that I keep near. It's got big scraps and bigger scraps and, and smaller scraps. So you can see it's quite a big box. Um, so this is a small scrap, obviously. Isn't that pretty? Um, but I will probably do some kind of little stitchy thing to put on the spine. Oh, I think I'm, I love this fabric. So what I did I actually purchase some very old fabrics and I'm making myself a sample book to keep, you know, keep a little sample of them all in. So I'll share those when they're done because I'm still sort of elaborating in my head. I really do like the look of that. I might tear this because I don't want to cover all of the back. But before I do that, I want to sort of just, oh, ah, oh, that, yeah, that, this is really chunky. This must have been a mattress ticking. I might stitch those two together and I'll have this that wide. Oh, I might fall over. 
this is my measuring. Put it on top, snip, and rip. That's it. So they are going to be stitched together. So that's going to go there, and it will wrap around the back. And this one I need to take a bit off. I like this bit where there's still the stitching. So I can cut it about here. I don't know if this will rip. Oh, it does. That's lucky. And I am liking the look of this one. I am liking the look of that. And there's still more going to have to happen. But I'm liking that. And they will go not cover that up. Oh, L for Lucy. Mm -hmm. Okay, now this one. Right. I'll keep that. So, I have this bit. I mean, these are so old and thin. This one... Because I don't want to cover that P up, I might approach it in a different way, just so we can see a different different way to approach something. I could have something like this there, and then a smaller piece of fabric here, maybe even that one. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? And then I might have a little piece of lace there. That's what I'll do with this one. Yes, and then I don't need to cover up the P. I'm loving the colours with this as well. And obviously, I mean, obviously, because this has got beautiful old paper on it, you're not going to put it somewhere wet where it's going to be damaged sort of thing. Love that. That can be a tab on a page. Yeah, so let's do that. I'm going to put that down. I don't know if I want to do any stitching on it. Or if I just like it as it is. I've got this little piece here sitting here looking at me. Oh, oh, I like that. You see, you just pick up your bits. See your bits lying around and think, oh, how will that look? What have I got here tucked away in the mess? So, oh, that's beautiful. Put that one. No, I want a more, more lacy, lacy bit for there. So I'll, get, I'll grab the lacy bits. I don't think I want this one. I might like a piece of that. Um maybe up here somewhere I'm not sure I kind of like that more bright white over here with this one I don't know why and I like it oh, I don't mind it there I like it less there so I'll put that over there to remind myself I can can you tell like I, this is how my brain is going go it's going a million miles a minute um, with this project that is just evolving right in front of your eyes it's evolving right in front of your eyes we don't know what we're gonna get we don't I have a bag of laces here um, oh, this one cost an arm and a leg. Oh, that's it. The arm and a leg one is it. There you go. So we'll snip a piece of that off and that's going to go there. It's perfect. It's perfect. It's perfect. 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 So, oh, my thread's in the other room. The thread I wanted to use. That's okay. I'm going to grab another one. I mean, can you stand it? Can you just stand it? Because I don't know if I can stand it. I make myself crazy. Right. I've got other threads. I don't know why I was worried about the other one. They're just sewing machine threads. Look. Look at this box I got. Isn't it great? I hated my, um, my sewing machine threads. I had to have all these colours when I was making growth charts. I don't make them anymore. But they're still good for applique if you want to have the, you know find the colour that you need to applique like a really colourful sort of um, a really colourful piece of fabric and you can't use this sort of ecru sort of colour because you'll be able to stand out like a sore thumb um, then it's good to have a lot of colours of thread right I was totally stressed before because I, I hadn't done my video yet Oh, I'm loving this. This is fun. If you want to do it along with me, guys, start thinking about your covers. And we've got to do inside yet. But anyway, let's do the exterior. Might not quite finish it. I'm just appliquing this on here by hand. I would prefer, like, fabric on fabric. I mean, of course, you can use Fabri-Tac. I don't have Fabri-Tac. Um, apparently, it's a bit whiffy. Um, but I've got a knot. Deary me. Um, I prefer to stitch my fabric on fabric. I trust it more than just using glue. Glue onto, gluing fabric onto paper, if you use like a PVA, 
Um, even my Giotto glue does a good job of it, um, but PVA is better. Um, or Fabri-Tac or those other glues. Probably tacky glue is good. Um, yeah, that's fine, but fabric on fabric, I much prefer to have it stitched. It doesn't take that long. It's actually quite relaxing. I love it when you just pick up random pieces and they just work together and, and well, I think they work. And and then you just create this this new cover or whatever out of them. Sometimes I just do that. I'll get my into my box and I'll just stitch things. I'll just show you. Like, here's a hole. And I've just stitched those together with my little invisible stitch. And then one day I'm going to do something with it. I don't know what. Sometimes it's just nice. Even when you're feeling like, oh, I don't know what to do with myself and... Um, you're missing a bit of mojo doing paper collage or but that's a, like a little fabric collage you just sit there and put them together a few just a couple of pieces and stitch them down and put them aside in fact I need to do some more and then decide what to do even things like this you could have and that was just a piece I don't know I think I put the other piece in one of my sample things I'm putting together um, do I need to, I need to stitch these two together. Now, do I want that over that? No, I want this over that. So I'm going to, I might pin it before I stitch it. It's nice to have everything at arm's length, isn't it? I can just lean over there to my little messy stitchy table. Well, it's messy because I've got, thing, you know, stitching stuff piled up on it that I'm working on. But I like to just lean over and grab things. Now, I was watching Jude Hill, Spirit Cloth, the other day and she's got a new technique with the um with the actually do you know what i don't want to waste that pea i'm going to rip that off that will be lovely on something isn't that silly but that will be lovely can i get it i can oh i love that thank you i'll be keeping that not keeping it using it somewhere but there we go she did a new way of doing her invisible stitch. So let's see if I, I can't remember. So come up here, you do your little stitch. Next. Actually here at the beginning, I need to come over here and, and do one over here as well. I'm gonna do both sides at the same time. This is what she did, she went, she di went diagonal across and did a little stitch. And then she came up here and did her little stitch. So it was a zigzag. I think that's what it was. I probably need to watch the video again. Go down here. Come back up here. It's just going to hold it together for me to do whatever I want with it. Careful not to pull it. So yeah, when I'm stitching, I, I, I tell you this all the time, when I'm doing this sort of thing, I readjust, I stop, pull it, make sure it's flat, Not I'm not puckering it all and pulling too tight. I always think it's worth just worth it to stitch your things down properly. It really doesn't take that long, and it's quite mindless in the sense my it's mindful but mindless because while I'm sitting there doing that, I'm thinking, what's next? What am I going to do next? And sometimes I don't know what's next, and I'm sitting here doing this, and then it comes to me. So it's kind of you know it's mindless in the sense you don't really have to think about it. You just it's just fairly mechanical. But then here I'd have to remember that I need to stitch there to catch that. I've got to readjust because I'm pulling it there and down here to hold it. Okay, so that's that. Then I'm wondering to myself, do I want a little something here? I don't want to cover the the L. Do I want that? No, that is not working for me. These ones are good. I can glue those down. They're good. 
I'll just keep that there in case. I've got this beautiful piece. Oh, but this is it. Isn't that crazy how one little thing that's sitting around on your table, I need to bring it up a bit, sitting on my table, and there it is. It's going to work on my book. So I have never made one with one of these sorts of file folders before. I know lots of people make journals with file folders and I've had these for years since I started really almost um, waiting for me to do something with them so it's time to use them as a base why not we always I'm always using altered books um, I did get a comment I hate seeing people rip up books um, the other day and they're meant to be read not for ripping up sort of thing and I'm I'm just like first of all it's each to their own I'm not going to criticize people that that would say that you know that think that but you don't need to come to me and say that to me because this is my channel and I'm doing what I like to do and if you don't like it then there's no one forcing anyone to watch anything um, number one and number two I have a different opinion about um, books and fabrics and even embroidered doilies my opinion is that if they are going to sit in a drawer or on a shelf and gather dust and no, no one ever reads them or ever looks at them and and they just live this sad life of never being cared for or they're going to finish or they've been thrown out by a library or a council or the the um what you call them the what do you call the ones that inherit the heiresses? No, they're not heiresses as in they're going to inherit lots of money. But you know what I mean. They... Oh, my goodness. I can't. I'm having a blank. Sorry, guys. Um, too much Italian yesterday. Let's blame it on that. Anyway, you know what I mean. The ones that inherit. If, you know, um, great grandma dies or granny dies um, and they had a library full of stuff or a, a drawer full of laces and doilies and... and and nobody wants them that inherits them and then they're like get rid of them or throw them out then I think it's better to repurpose something than stick it in a drawer or throw it in the rubbish um, or have it on a shelf with the pages that are still stuck together because they were it was never read some books were never read or or even like of course if a book is beautifully bound it's really pretty to look at I can't tell you. I have a bookshelf where I, I do have some beautifully beautiful books and I will not rip them up. No, I won't because they're in pristine condition and they are beautiful. And of course, I don't rip those ones up. The only ones I rip up are the ones that were, you know, texts that people were using. Maybe they were for university in the 1800s. I don't know, scientific or medical or... Um, and they were mass produced. They weren't like, you know, the really special editions or anything like that. And they're in, but not great condition. And well, they have a lovely cover, but they're not in great condition. I will repurpose those books. I will. I'm, I have no shame to say I will repurpose them. If they're falling apart, especially they're gonna, they're gonna be ripped apart. Although, for example, to give you an example, my mother-in-law. Last time we were at the market together, there was a more expensive book. It's from the 1700s. It's lovely. Um, Steph and I, she gave it to us to, we've scanned some of the beautiful images in there and everything. I mean, they're, it's all, they're mostly the ones you find here are ecclesiastical. Oh my goodness, my glue's not coming down. Why aren't you? Here it comes. Um, most of the books I find are ecclesiastical. Like, I do have a couple of... Um, nature sort of ones from the 1800s and they are on the bookshelf <laughs> one time I got I got there was there were three volumes it's actually in English it was I can't remember the natural world or natural history or something like that um you can see here I'm putting it on my fabric because I I don't know why because I'm talking um anyway it was the natural world and I, I've kept them they're on my bookshelf and and uh, anyway I had put them in my box because I sort of gather up boxes from my, my dealer that I go to. And um, this gentleman was there and he, he was like, can I buy those from you? <laughs> I'm like, oh, well, 
No, not really, because I haven't even looked in them yet. <laughs> so they must have been good books, so they are in my bookshelf. Um, but you know what? I haven't had time to read them. So this is the whole point. Like, are you going to read them? What are you going to do with them? But no, I couldn't because they're rarities. It's very hard to find books with illustrations and stuff from, from that time period. And when you do find them, they're quite very high exorbitant prices. Um, there was one that had really beautiful botanical um, illustrations in it. I was, think it was from like 1850 or 1870 could have been. Um, and my mother-in-law asked the price. And it was like a lot of the bot botanicals that are actually in the public domain that you know, that a lot of us use in our digital kits and things. Um, and it would have been lovely to have one of those. I would never pull it apart. Do you know how much the man wanted for it? He wanted 4,000 euro. I said, oh, you can keep it. And then he had he had had one that obviously had been falling apart and he'd ripped it a part of and he kept the illustrated plates and he was selling them for 40 euro each. And I thought, he is really expensive because there are people that you can get them for a bit cheaper. Than that for one page but you know it just depends it really depends on the on the seller what price you're going to find things for you know the one down the road can sell it for this price and the one up the road will sell it for a higher more exorbitant price so that's my opinion about um vintage things honestly if we're not going to look at it we're not going to appreciate it you need to do something with it so that it will be appreciated in one form or another. It might be just in a different form. But at least it's not there hidden away or collecting dust. It's just a difference of opinion. I know and I respect everybody else's opinions. I really do. I, you know, it's the same with all the different things that happen in the world. We all have different opinions. Um, and I just think it's disrespectful when people come and impose their opinion on you i have it we have a friend he's he's gone bon he's gone bonkers he's literally become unbearable he's like one of my husband my husband's one of his best friends and he's he's now preaching he's preaching to everybody not as in the religious preaching he's just preaching his opinions and it's become terrible because we're, we're not we have a different opinion and my husband does and and but he would never 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 impose his opinion on him never never tell him oh you're doing this wrong or that wrong and he's just gone mad he's just it's all he talks about and and he even is aware that that he's upset our friend group doing it and um not the mean man that's rude to everyone um that this is another one um but he just can't stop himself it's like an illness. He's obviously very, unha you know, like very concerned about what he's thinking. Very concerned about it because it's causing him grief. He just, he's he's living and breathing it. But then he passes his grief on to everybody else. Not grief as in the morning grief. Oh, I love that. Okay, and then I need to think in there, but I'm not sure yet. But anyway, let's just do this other one. I think we'll do because the kits aren't quite ready yet there's a little bit to be done i think in the next um video we're going to work on the, this part here because there's quite look at this there's quite a bit of surface there to work in so um i think we'll do that in the next video so let's have a look at this one and i'm i'm thinking i might want something a little bit more on here but i don't know so when i don't know i'm just going to put it aside and um and we'll do this start to finish but i won't do every single bit on video you know what i mean like if i need to make i'll show you the different elements but um just to speed it along a little bit i'll do off camera as well um talking a million miles a minute today can you tell i haven't done a video for a few days right this one i'm going to put my glue on the thing because i need to get it right so i know i need to swish down here I can guarantee you this is going to hold. It does. This PVA glue. It's just a craft glue, really. Children's. It's indicated for children too. It's great glue. It glues everything. The only difference between this and the Fabri-Tac is the Fabri-Tac, I've been told, just dries much faster because it's got some sort of acetate. Acetone? Is that what it is? You know, like what's in the nail polish is in there. So um, that was the doorbell. It's very loud. So hopefully Steffi will get it. Okay. Oh, 
Oh, I think it's someone trying to sell something. I can hear a woman. Glue this down. Yep, someone trying to sell something. <laughs> okay, so that's I'm going to leave that curly whirly like that. Let's just move this one out of the way. Okay. Yep, and it's going to arrive to. I just sort of eyeball where it's going to go and if I need to add more I will I need to fill this little thing up it's very handy having these fine nibbed ones to put your glue in so yeah it's going to take a minute to finish these covers so I think in the the next time I do work on this which will probably be I think I'll work on Thursday because we miss Sunday so extra video this week if I get it done I mean oh it's Easter too that might be hard but anyway I'll try my best um we will work again on this on Thursday, I think. I've been a bit of a, a bit of a lazy person as far as digital kits are concerned. It's just like so many different things to do. It's just hard to focus, isn't it, sometimes when you've got too many things. Making journals, then we're doing Easter and and then we did, and we did what else did we do we've done packs and all kinds of stuff it's all it's all happening oh my gosh <coughs> excuse me i'm sneezing could be dust it could be the the glue i don't know okay so that's that and i may add something else i don't know oh, just love it i'm going to put this on just cuz i feel like need something i'm going to put it about there because i might do something here or here oh i just love it there's a bit of a bit of old and a bit of printed out that's how i work a bit of both we like to have a bit of both i've got to use all the things all the things mix it all up i do like the mix of it i don't have to use all old or just all digitals i like i like to mix it all up I think that's what gives you sort of the an eclectic sort of feel about things too sometimes about there I love that cool oh I'm liking that and I'm liking that aren't they gorgeous so the nice thing too about the craft who sent me those I was such a long time ago the craft um, file folder is that it's lovely to be able to see it as well. Really like that. Okay, so I think that's my video for today. I want to sort of stew on these a little bit. That's why I don't want to go on um, further. Um, you know, I mean, you can do so many things. I don't know. But you could make a little bunched up something and put it somewhere. Maybe, that, maybe not so. You know, you can do so many things. Anyway, have it down here. Like that, even. Oh, that's interesting. I wouldn't put it on this one because it's the same. I might not, that doesn't really go with those, so I wouldn't do that. But anyway, that's a thought too. Um, yeah, I want to stew in it. I also want to let it dry before I sort of open it up as well because I I might get a lumpy ridge anyway. But anyway, I prefer to let them dry. Get off the back as well. Um, and then we're going to work on the inside. So I'll have a think about that. So I hope everybody's well. Thank you so much for watching. Um, and I'm very excited about this new project. And I will see you again tomorrow. Bye.